Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen today. Be encouraged, be encouraged. I know that for so many of us, we are around some very discouraging people, some people who are not about uplifting, but bringing us down. I know that some people don't understand where we're coming from at times. They rather go the negative route than to gain some understanding and become wise. So, For those of you all who just want just a bit of encouragement today, shall we be encouraged? Shall we be filled with joy? Shall we be the ones that have the uplifting word next time when we're talking to someone and a beautiful smile? I pray in Jesus mighty name right now that all of us will be beacons of light in these coming days, weeks, and months. I pray that we will be like polished diamonds and that when we are in the company of others, that we will shine ever so brightly, that the Lord will give us the words to speak, give us that countenance of joy, and most of all, that people will be led to Christ by being in our presence. In Jesus' name. Sometimes, The world wants us to be like them, cold, callous, mean-spirited, angry. But there are times where none of those emotions are necessary because our hearts are on bigger and better. Come on. Think about those things that you got in motion, right? Those plans, those tasks, those details. You don't have time to be caught up in somebody's mess, somebody who's still harboring ill feelings, somebody who doesn't want to let go and let God. You don't have time to be caught up in someone else's matrix and somebody sitting up there waiting for you to fall because they are so envious of you. I ask that the Lord replenish us, replenish us with just thanksgiving for all that we have. Sometimes we're after more and more and the Lord is like, be grateful for what you already have. That individual doesn't want you to be grateful. That's why he or she keeps bringing new things for you to buy, new things for you to do, new places for you to go. Some folks, they overwhelm you with so much because they don't like what little you already have. (laughs) So if I overwhelm, if I confuse, if I, you know, just dump a lot of negativity upon you, you're not going to be focused on being joyful, being thankful, thinking about what is lovely, what is pure. But the angel reassured them, don't be afraid, right? Sometimes people, they want you to fear what you're already over. They want you to go back to the way you used to be. They want you to worry about things that you don't typically worry about. But the angel reassured them, don't be afraid. He said, I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. Luke 2, 10. Psalm 28, 7, the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him and I'm helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoice and with my song will I praise him. Philippians 4, 4 says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. John 16, 24, until now you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. And sometimes we can experience true joy because we haven't asked the Lord what we want. I asked the Lord for an opportunity to relocate. And I'm trusting and believing that the Lord is going to do just that. Some folks say, you always look in the mood. You know, you always got something going on. I tell them, I say, hey, life is short. And I intend to get the most out of living on this side as possible. And there is no one or nothing that's going to restrict me in one location for a long, long time. Some of us, we don't do so well when we remain stagnant. (laughs) Some of us, we tend to get on other people's nerves 
because we get itchy feet, right? That grass starts to grow under our feet. And some of you all, you know what I'm talking about. Those that are comfortable just being, just existing and staying comfort, comfortable in their situation. They don't get that. They say, "Uh, uh-uh, I I don't want to be here, there and everywhere. That's you. That's you. Nobody's judging. That's you. (laughs) But some of us, we don't. We don't like sticking around in the same spot for too long. So God, he has a way of answering the desires of our heart. And as we see manifestations taking place, as we see signs and wonders, there is the joy that comes upon us. And those that don't like us being joyful, they're going to come up with distractions. They're going to talk about what you shouldn't do, what you ought to do and everything else. But I'm doing what? I'm going to be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous, and shout for joy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Psalm 32, 11. That's in the New King James Version. Proverbs 29, 6 in the New Living Translation says, evil people, okay, those ones that want to keep you down, evil people are trapped by sin. So of course they're not going to be joyful. Of course they're not going to be happy for too long. Of course they don't know Jesus like you know Jesus. Evil people are trapped by sin, but the righteous escape shouting for joy. They're trapped by sin, but the righteous escape. Your escape is putting in that resignation letter. Hallelujah. Your escape is packing up your bags and going out that door. Your escape is packing up boxes and moving clear out of the community, the state. Your escape is hooking up with the right people. Your escape is going to see the doctor and getting some medicine that's going to take care of some problems. Come on. There's various types of escape. And there's that escape, though, that we want. That is a righteous escape, not a drug-induced escape, not an alcohol-induced escape, not a has sex today type of escape. You see what I mean? Evil people, they operate in sin, in flesh. Evil people are trapped by sin, but the righteous escape shouting for joy. As sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. Second Corinthians 6, 10. So the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing, with everlasting joy on their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness. Sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Isaiah 51, 11. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount. So now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. Matthew 25, 21. There's a celebration taking place for some of you all. There is this celebration ahead because you have been faithful. You have been good. Don't let people tell you anything different. See, they're trying to rob you of your joy. You know, you've been good. You know, you've been faithful. And so because you have been this way with small, small amounts, right? Small things, the Lord is going to increase you. He's giving you more. He's giving you more responsibilities, but it's not going to be burdensome. Come on. And I receive that word right now in the name of Jesus for myself. Hallelujah. It's not going to be burdensome. Everybody assumes that, oh, more responsibility, you know, challenging environment, challenging people, challenging projects and all that. It must be bad. No, let me tell you, sometimes people are missing out on their blessings because they're assuming that challenge is going to be bad when challenge is really a good thing for so many. Hallelujah. So let's celebrate together. All right, Luke 6, 23, rejoice ye in that day and leap for joy for behold, your reward is great in heaven for in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. Psalm 33, 21 reminds us for our heart shall rejoice in him. That's another thing. If I'm not rejoicing in the one true God, 
and I'm rejoicing in everyone and everything else. You know, they're going to let me down eventually. So my heart's rejoicing in him because why we have trusted in his holy name, right? You have trusted in him. You said, I trust in the Lord. And so now your heart fills up and you've let some people, places and things go while they're still harboring ill feelings. Your have, you have a joyful heart. You have peace. In Jesus mighty name. Singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves and making music to the Lord in your hearts. So Isaiah 61 10 says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. Is any one of you in trouble? He should pray. Still don't feel uplifted. Still don't feel joyful. Still tripping off of what someone said or did. Bible says, is any one of you in trouble? He should pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. James 5, 13, New International Version. Hallelujah. Glory be to your name, Heavenly Father. Lord Jesus, somebody feels burdened. Somebody feels troubled. Give those issues over to the one true God. Stay in the anointing. Stay in this presence right here, right here, right here in the now. Stay in this moment of loving the Lord. Stand in this moment of if it wasn't for God, you wouldn't be here. Stay in that moment of the times where he healed you, where he brought you unexpected blessings, times where he got you out of situations, situations far worse than what you've been going through. Rejoice in the healing. You could have been that one that's not walking, not talking, not being able to hear, but God. You could have been that one that was sitting up there in the hospital with tubes up your nose and somebody ready to pronounce you dead, but God. Nothing that a man or a woman says, whether to your face or behind your back, is important. But God is. And I mean that. God is. God is important. God is going to fight our battles. God is our refuge. God is our strength. God is the one that speaks to us when nobody else wants to speak to us. God is the one that orders our steps. If God tell you go, then you go. If God tell you stay, you stay. If God say sit in his presence and be quiet, that's what you do. And even if he hasn't spoken, then you do those things. Oh, come on. And he'll meet you halfway. Lord Jesus, I don't know who I'm talking to, but I know that sometimes the tears, the fears, the worries can be so great. It's like a recording that goes over and over and over in your head. But God, hallelujah. Heavenly Father, hallelujah. Glory be to your name. Glory be to your name. Glory be to your name. God is a righteous God, a loving God, a sweet God. Hallelujah. Stay in his presence for a little while. Don't be so quick to just move on. Don't be so quick to say, okay, I'm good. Sometimes you got to stay in his presence. Some people are known for staying in God's presence for hours and hours, for days, locked up in a room because they have gone through so much and they can't look another person in their face. They can't listen to another person. Somebody need to just go to a hotel room and just stay there for a while. 
Somebody needs to go into their prayer closet and just stay there for a while. Somebody needs to call somebody up and say, I'm not coming to work today. Somebody else needs to say, you know what? I'm going to leave and not come back. Because it can be so overwhelming dealing with other people that the enemy has a way of portion people out of joy and into a jail cell. He was fine just the other day. The enemy has a way of portion people from wanting to live to wanting to commit suicide. And I thought that he loved his life and his wife and come on. When I stay in the Lord's presence, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Whatever the enemy planned on doing, reverse the curse. You see, oh, I feel like we got to go into the book of Psalms. This message might be just a little long for some folk. You might even have to pause it and come back and listen to it again or something. Because I'm feeling a heavy presence, a heavy presence of the Lord. Because as I'm talking to you, the Lord is letting me know. He's like, listen, we got to fight this thing spiritually. This can't be dealt with, with communication. You see, sometimes we got challenges in our life as we're in barking on joy, loving, you know, just what God is doing in our lives. Sometimes we think that some issues though can be dealt with. By just simple communication and we can keep our joy. But you know how it is. Sometimes when you sit down with some folks, they're not going to bring, they're not going to bring peace and love. They're going to bring nothing more than negativity. And they're going to keep playing around until eventually God is going to intervene. So if you want to stay in that spirit of joy, first and foremost is, is that you're not going to be that one that gets played by your enemy by prematurely leaving out of your prayer closet to go talk to the enemy because you feel good. <laughs> Come on. Haven't we been known to do that? Oh, I'm feeling good right now. I'm feeling wonderful in the Lord. I'm just going to go over here and start talking to this one and that one. The Lord said, Whoa, no, 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 no. Come back over here, daughter. Or he'll create all sorts of distractions and obstacles and stuff to keep you from going over there. Uh, uh, uh. No, 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 no. Don't cast your pearls to swine. Stay in this space right here. Because I'm telling you earlier, I was a little bit tempted. I was a little bit tempted to go somewhere. And the Lord said, no, 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 no. No, you're going to stay right where you are. Enemy trying to set a trap for you. Lord Jesus. And he'll do that. You'll be sitting up there praising the Lord, having a good time. Prematurely leave out of that anointing, that moment with the Lord. Go out there. Next thing you know, it's an accident. Go out there. You end up having an argument with somebody at the store. You go out there, you end up slipping and falling. You go out there, you end up getting into it with your kids or with your husband or your wife or somebody. Mm -mm. Stay in this space right here. I don't know who I'm talking to. Stay in this space right here. Well, I got this and that to do. Your mind going to tell you to do a lot of things. But right now your spirit is saying you need to be replenished. Come on, you need a fresh anointing. But, but, but God will deal with that. He got your phone calls. <laughs> oh, yes, Lord. He got, he got whatever it is that you need in the palm of his hand right now, or what you think you need. What's the desires of your heart? Because that right there is the root cause of why so many people don't stay in joy. My desires, my desires in my heart are not being met. Okay, Lord. So can you do something? And the Lord says, yeah, I can do something. There's a key scripture in Psalm 37, 3, 5, trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shall be fed. Hallelujah. Delight thyself also in the Lord. So woman, take your eyes off that man. Oh, I'm going to go to the new land with the man. No, you're not. The Lord said you're going to the new land with him. Your eyes are going to be on him. Oh, I'm going to bring my friend and we going to all go over here. The Lord said, no, uh-uh. Take your eyes off your friend and focus on me. And it's going to be me and you going. Woo, Jesus. And some of you all, you got to remember the last time somebody robbed your joy because you brought the wrong person on the journey. 
You had the wrong person in the passenger seat or seated in the back seat. You had booked the ticket for the wrong person. Come on. Oh, Lord Jesus. I want to keep my joy this trip. The Lord said, don't bring him then because he's going to get on your nerves. I want to keep my joy this holiday season. Well, then you don't need to be spending up all that money then because you know how it was last year after you spent up all your money. I want to keep my joy. Then you don't invite certain people over to your home. I don't care what the holiday is. It's pagan anyway. And that's a whole nother topic. And you can check my audios on that. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Let's read that again. Delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. Thank you, Jesus. I'm committing my way unto the Lord. I don't want to commit my way unto someone else, unto another establishment, unto another job, unto what the kids want. I am committing thy way unto the Lord. I'm trusting in him. I'm delighting in him. Why are you spending so much time talking about the Lord today? Because somebody needs a breakthrough. Somebody needs joy. Somebody needs to do just what the scripture is saying. Trusting in the Lord. Delighting thyself in the Lord. Committing thy way unto the Lord. And then the scripture ends with trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. So I want something. I've got to trust in the Lord. I want to go somewhere. I've got to commit my way to the Lord. I want some joy. I need to be delighting myself in the Lord, not delighting myself in some baby photos or looking at some cute cat videos. That's not going to do it. It's temporal anyway. Watching a movie after the movie's over. Don't you feel sad? Don't you feel like, oh, what else am I going to do now? Right? When you don't feel good and you go and you do something like that, that's temporal. Sometimes you feel worse. But if I'm staying in God's presence right now and I'm encouraging my brothers and sisters in Christ who too want to get a piece of the pie, right? The blessings overflow, the land of milk and honey. Then we don't have anything to be concerned about. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Oh, Lord God, my heavenly father, help me to trust in you and do good. I delight myself in you. Thank you for your promise to give me the desires of my heart as I do so. And that's taken out of praying the Psalms by Clift and Kathleen Richards. Father, I want my desires to be pleasing to you. Therefore, I ask you to keep me from all presumptuous sins and desires. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord God, my strength and my redeemer, as I commit my way unto you and trust totally in you, dear God, I believe you will bring my heart's desires to pass. Thank you, Father. You are King forever, O God, and you know the desires of my heart. Thank you for the assurance your word gives me that you will both hear my prayer and grant my heart's desires. Lord God, all my desires are before you. In you, I hope and I know you will hear my prayers. Thank you, Father. You, dear God, have held me up with your right hand and you are guiding me with your counsel. Who have I in heaven but you, O God? I desire you more than anyone or anything. Indeed, you are the strength of my heart, my portion and inheritance forever. Let me say that again. I desire you more than anyone or anything. Indeed, you are the strength of my heart, my portion and inheritance forever. I know you are near to me as I call upon you, Father, and you are fulfilling the desires of my heart as I pray. Thank you you for hearing my prayer and granting my heart's desires in Jesus name I pray amen hallelujah God is an awesome God God is an awesome God 
Woo, Jesus. There was a time where I sat up there and I said to some relatives about what God was doing in my life. And rather than they be happy for me, they started questioning me. They started saying all sorts of negative things behind my back. They started looking at me a little bit closer and nitpicking. Yes, I'm a flawed human being. I already know that. Yes, I've done my share of dirt in the past. And yes, there are times where I feel like wanting to do other things other than keeping my mind on the Lord. But I wasn't expecting the reaction. And some of you all, you weren't expecting the reaction either when you decided to walk the straight and narrow and walk right with the Lord. You lost some friends. I know I did. And the enemy wanted to take the joy. I'm running around here talking about hallelujah, praise be to the Lord. I'm feeling good. The enemy wanted to take the joy by using haters, by using people who didn't understand, by using so-called favorites. I had to hold on to my joy. Can I tell somebody, hold on to your joy, hold on to your joy. Oh, the blessing is coming. The blessing for some of you all already came. But you weren't paying close attention. The old school said, count your blessings. Sit back and count your blessings. Look at all of what God brought you through. Look at all of what God brought you through. Look at all of what God did for someone else. Ooh, you can take joy. <laughs> You can take joy in that direction as well. Sometimes it's not about us. Sometimes it's about what God's doing in somebody else's heart. Somebody going to get saved, sanctified, Holy Spirit filled before it's all said and done. They're going to get tired of fighting the Lord and fighting the people of God. They're going to get tired of trying to do things in their own strength. They're going to get tired of looking at themselves in the mirror and seeing that aging process. Come on. I'm tired of being depressed. I'm tired of feeling sad. I'm tired of feeling angry. The Lord says, okay, well, if you're tired, then come on and experience my joy. Unspeakable joy. The type of joy that makes a grown man run around the church. The type of joy that makes a little girl cry because she feels something on the inside that she can't explain. God. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit left behind when Jesus ascended unto heaven, God, Holy Spirit, Jesus. There are three distinct personalities to the one true God. And when we read the Bible, we see him as a man, Jesus. We see him as a spirit after Jesus ascended, Holy Spirit. We see God in the Old Testament talking and walking. Lord Jesus. Greater is he in you than he who is in the world. You are fearfully and you are wonderfully made. You are the head and not the tail. You serve the great God, I am. He is Alpha, he's Omega. He's the first, he's the last. He was here before we even showed up. He's the one that put the grass on this planet. He's the one that put the stars in the sky. He's the one that makes water come out from that sky. He's the one that makes the sun shine. How dare we walk around here and act as if 
at times we don't know God. He knows our names. Heavenly Father, you are worthy to be praised. Unspeakable joy. Somebody say that. I need unspeakable joy. I need unspeakable joy. I want to feel better about my situation. I want to feel good. I want to walk knowing that everything's going to be all right. Lord, can you meet me halfway? That's somebody's prayer in Jesus name. Thank you, O Heavenly Father, for what you're about to do in this person's life who has listened to the entirety of this message. May they be blessed. May they be highly favored. May their children and their children's children be blessed. Put more love in their heart for their enemies as well as for their friends and for their family. Thank you as always for taking time out of your busy schedule to listen. Be at peace knowing that God got you. Feel free to check the description box for anything that might be of interest. If you feel so moved to give, you can do that as well. And after you turn off this message, stay in God's presence just a little while longer and wait for your breakthrough. It's just simply being quiet sitting still and letting God have his work in you. Blessings to you.